It's June 30th, 2021. I'm Todd Dunn. And today I thought that I would talk a little bit about buying a wooden boat. So, if you get the urge to buy a wooden boat, there are a number of things you need to do. The first step, of course, is to see your psychiatrist and uh, make sure you have not gone insane. <laughs> I say that simply because wooden boats represent a lot of work or a lot of money to pay somebody else to do the work. So that's uh, a big consideration. But anyway, uh, if it's a sincere desire and you found a wooden boat that you might be interested in, there are a number of things you need to do when you're buying a wooden boat. Now, I'm going to make the assumption that the wooden boat you're buying is a little bit bigger. It's not just a dinghy or a, an open sailboat or something. Uh, let's say it's a powerboat, something like uh, my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga, which is a 32-foot boat. And uh, you're going to want to one, look over the boat and check out the systems, make sure it has uh, what you want on it, or make sure that the things that you'd like to have on the boat can easily be added. The next thing you need to do is inspect the boat. Now, this uh, can be pretty involved. It depends on how much you know about wooden boats and wooden boat construction. But even if you don't know a lot, there are some things you need to do. One thing you need to do is get yourself some sort of plastic implement to sound the hull with. And by sound the hull, I mean simply tap on the hull. Now what I usually use is the handle of a screwdriver. It's rounded usually and you can tap the hull uh, without uh, damaging the paint or anything. You don't have to tap very hard. All you're doing is tapping it to see if the wood sounds good. And you want to go over the entire hull. Now this will be a problem if the boat's in the water. You won't be able to do it below the water line, but you can definitely do it above the water line. And uh, this can take a little while. I recommend tapping it about every six inches all over the entire hull. And I'll give you a little demo of what's involved with that. Okay, we're outside Tortuga now. And this is my screwdriver that I'm going to use to tap it. The end of the screwdriver is plastic. It's a relatively soft plastic. But all I'm interested in is the sound that it makes. So what I'll do is just go down here and tap the hole like that. And that's the kind of sound you want to hear a good sharp ringing sound. You do not want to hear a sort of dead sound. Now I can't demonstrate what uh, dead wood sounds like here on Tortuga's hull because uh, I have uh, just this last year replaced all the bad wood on Tortuga and all the wood is in good shape. But you want to go over the entire hull like that, tapping it every few inches all the way around the hull and that's going to take you some time i figure you know it's probably going to take you at least an hour and you want to make sure you go over the entire hull it's also a good idea to do the decks here's a bit of tortuga's deck and we'll just do some tapping see she sounds nice and solid And what we're going to look for is variations in sound while we're tapping. Now when you're tapping like that, you may be able to hear uh, when you go over a deck beam or a frame. And, uh, and that'll change the pitch a little bit, but as long as it's a nice sharp sound, that means the wood is okay. If you find a spot that sounds a little bit dead, you can do this. 
oh let's pretend that's a dead spot you can take the screwdriver and just press a little and see if you indent it now you don't want to press very hard because you don't want to damage the paint but if there's a soft spot in the wood you'll be able to make a small indentation with the tip of the screwdriver and that will tell you that there's an issue there and ideally of course you'd like to do this when the boat is out of the water so that you can sound the entire hull above the waterline and below the waterline and identify any issues with the hull and you might also want to take some pictures one other thing you want to look for is if you're looking at a painted hull look at the quality of the paint if the paint looks like it's maybe a little bit bubbled or doesn't look quite right you know looks a little bit uh, wavy and distorted that may mean that the wood underneath the paint is not sound and that's a spot you should pay particular attention to when you're sounding the hull so that's the first thing you want to do after you've looked the boat over very carefully to see if there are any flaws and obviously the other things you're going to want to look for are the overall state of maintenance of the hull is the paint in good shape is the varnish in good shape etc and if if it is then you can uh, move on to the next step and that is going aboard the boat now once you're on board the boat you want to look at the interior finishes are they in good shape is the boat clean uh, are there any flaws in the finish is the varnish good if it's uh, satin finish like this is it nice and smooth if it's gloss finish is it also nice and smooth if it's rough it may indicate a low quality varnish job or that it needs to be sanded out and have another coat so you can look over the interior just for any flaws and finishes or anything like that and you can go down into any cabin on the boat let the camera adapt and do the same thing look at the finishes is the trim in good shape is it well done is the joiner work good and tight and basically is the boat clean are the fabrics in good shape and my wife puts towels over them to keep them clean so our fabrics are nice and clean but you want to look are they in good shape are there tears are there stains take a look at the head is the head okay is everything working properly up there uh, if you look at the galley is there sink you can turn systems on like the water give it a check see if it works if there's refrigeration you might want to turn it on see if it works check out uh, the stove cabinets and shelving and everything another thing you want to do is take a look at the electrical system are there proper battery switches is there a circuit breaker panel and on a boat you really want a circuit breaker panel not a fuse panel so is there a circuit breaker panel does the boat have its safety equipment although that's relatively minor new uh, fire extinguishers for a typical pleasure boat are only going to cost you about forty dollars okay while you're down below one thing you might want to do is open up the floorboards and take a look at the bilge to see what state it's in let's take a look in tortugas bilge so you can lift the floorboards and take a look at the bilge now don't be scared if there's a little water in the bilge uh, bilge pumps normally can't pump all the water out so you'll probably find some in there you can see there's a bit in tortugas bilge a little water in the bilge is completely normal for a carvel planked wooden boat if there's no water at all in the bilge it probably means the boats on the hard so you want to take a look at that you want to see if the uh, keel floors uh, frames etc look to be in good shape wrap the frames and floors and the keel with your screwdriver to see if they sound and give you a good sharp sound and just overall 
look for good condition. If it, things are painted, is the paint in good shape, etc. So those are some of the things you're going to want to look at in the bilge. And ideally, you want to lift all the floorboards and have a look at everything. You might also want to take a look at the bilge pumps. And if they can be run, for example, you can turn Tortuga's bilge pumps on. They're running. If there are float switches, you might want to lift them up and check to make sure that the bilge pumps work. If the boat is equipped with a bilge cycle counter, you want to take a look at it, see what it looks like. The final thing you're going to want to do inside is take a look at the engine compartment. On Tortuga, it's down here. So you can lift it up, take a look at the engine. Is the engine clean? Is the engine compartment tidy? Are the batteries well secured in a battery box? Uh, is there a seawater strainer? Are the all the uh, through hole fittings and anything connected to seawater double clamped? Like, like the seawater strainer is there. And basically, are things clean and tidy? Uh, you might also look for other things. For example, there is Tortuga's fixed fire extinguisher, and it's in good shape. You might want, if you can see it, you might want to check and see when it was last inspected and serviced. Now, when you're looking the boat over, you want to take a look at your engine controls. And uh, are they adequate? Are they in good shape? Do they look tidy? Um, and if it's possible, you might want to see if you can start the engine. We're just going to fire Tortuga up to show you what a relatively new diesel engine starts with. You can see she's got 300.6 hours. Okay, that's a cold start. Hasn't been run since yesterday. And you can see she started up pretty easily. And uh, just shut her down. You're probably not going to be allowed to move the boat until uh, you have an accepted offer and then you can set up a sea trial with whatever constraints uh, the boat's owner wants to apply to that. Other things you might want to do is check to make sure that systems work. Turn the radio on, see if it comes on. And if you're in a busy area, you might want to tune it to channel 16 to see if there are any signals. Coming in here in Southwest Harbor, Maine, uh, 16 is pretty dead channel. You might also want to turn the depth sounder on, if there is one, or any other electronics, and just make sure they work properly. You just want to go through and check all the systems. Turn the cabin lights on, check to make sure all the cabin lights fixtures work uh, and just you know check the water pressure and make sure all the systems run properly you I personally if I was in the market to buy a wooden boat like Tortuga I would uh, budget an entire afternoon or morning about four hours to give the boat a thorough look over I'd open all the cabinets like here in the back of the boat you can see they're opening panels underneath the settee I'd open those up see what's in there see how tidy it is is it clean etc on Tortuga you can actually access underneath the aft deck and if you're if there isn't a lot of junk under there you can actually crawl under and have a look around once you've uh, looked everything over sounded the hull and checked everything you can, uh, you can make an offer on the boat if you decided you want to go ahead. Now, to come up with a fair offer, you're going to have to do some research and see what comparable boats sell for. And uh, that can be a little bit uh, difficult because particularly if you're buying an older boat like Tortuga, uh, you're not going to find much that's comparable. And you have to bear in mind that a uh, yard maintained 
and or restored boat may have an outrageous price associated with it. And you're just going to have to uh, make a decision of what is a fair price. And basically, as is the case with anything like a boat, a fair price is what you are willing to pay for it. So you make your offer and the next step is to schedule a survey. Now, a survey is probably going to cost you in the neighborhood of $20 a lineal foot of the, based on the length of the boat. So 32 foot boat like Tortuga, you're probably going to pay about $640 or thereabouts for a survey. And the purpose of the survey is to have somebody who's experienced uh, in ideally wooden boat uh, construction techniques and systems to look over the boat and check everything out very thoroughly uh, using possibly more knowledge than you have about the wooden boats and uh, basically do a, a very serious look over on the boat just to make sure everything is okay. Now one thing about surveys is offers should always be made contingent to an acceptable survey. And unless the boat is in absolutely pristine condition, a survey will usually uh, identify things that need some work uh, that will allow you to adjust your offer down uh, and probably more than pay for the survey. Now the only time you wouldn't want a survey uh, is if the boat is really inexpensive, in which case, you know, you don't want to spend six or seven hundred dollars surveying a boat that you're going to buy for two thousand dollars. Okay, you're also going to want to have the engine checked out, depending on on the size of the engine. If it's a large engine, say a 200, 300 horse diesel, uh, you're going to want to definitely see if you can find an engine surveyor who will check the engine out, uh, possibly do things like compression tests and other things. And you can expect to pay five to seven hundred dollars for an engine survey. Now, if it's a small diesel, like Tortuga has a 40 horse diesel, an engine survey is probably not going to be worth it. You might want to see if the owner has maintenance records, see how many hours are on the engine, etc. And if the engine has had a routine maintenance schedule uh, that meets the uh, manufacturer's uh, recommendations. And you also want to consider total hours on the engine. A properly maintained diesel engine is good for six, seven, eight thousand hours. It depends on how the engine has been run and how it's been maintained and uh, that can be a big factor. So even if the engine has say 4,000 hours, if it's been well maintained and uh, not run really hard, then more than likely uh, you still have lots of engine life left. If you get up around six, 7,000 hours and you look at the engine and it's dirty and it doesn't look very well maintained and the owner doesn't have records of service of the engine, well then you maybe want to walk because a new diesel engine, particularly a big one, can cost a lot of money. Even on a boat like Tortuga with only a 40 horse diesel, putting a new diesel in this boat, if you hire it done, could cost you the better part of $20,000. So that could be a big factor. So check out the engine, do what you can, you know, check to see if it looks well kept and clean. Check particularly to see if there are indications that it's just been cleaned up because it may uh, have been sitting in uh, a state of very poor maintenance until just before you showed up. And that's something to consider. If it looks like it's been kept clean, then that isn't such a consideration. You know, you want to look for dirt on the engine, look for uh, black dust from well uh, wear on the uh, belts, uh, check the hoses to make sure they're solid, no soft spots, 
and basically just look the engine over carefully. And as I said, fire it up if you can, uh, just to see if it starts right up. And you want, if you can see them, take a look at the uh, fuel hoses to make sure that they are uh, Coast Guard approved, not just uh, cheapo automotive hoses from the local auto parts store, but the real thing, Coast Guard approved A1 or A2 fuel hose. So those are some of the things you can look at. This video is getting a little long, so uh, I guess I'll uh, stop now. I hope this has given you some ideas of what to look for when you're thinking about buying a wooden boat. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. Thanks again for watching.